But in every person's life, there comes a time when the tough decisions have to be faced head on, no matter how difficult they may be. Orson Welles once said that if you want a happy ending, you need to know when to end your story. And so I've all called you here today to announce the end of my story as the ninth premier of Newfoundland and Labrador. I will be stepping down on December 3rd to allow the party the time to elect a new leader. In the interim, my deputy premier, Kathy Nunnendale, will become the 10th premier. It was in November of 2000 when I decided to run, and a decade is a long time. At that time, I reflected upon the words of John F. Kennedy, who said, and I quote, anyone can make a difference, and everyone should try. And I'm very glad that I did, I can tell you. I was told that public life will give you the highest highs and the lowest lows that you have ever experienced. And it has indeed been all of that. It's been a real roller coaster. But the well wishes and the smiles, the handshakes, the genuine expressions of thanks, and the pats on the back have made it all worthwhile. I will dearly miss being motivated daily to make our province better than the best. And I will miss, miss the strategizing to make sure that all those who dare to impede the progress of Newfoundland and Labrador are no longer successful. singularly focused on our dreams, our vision, and our goals, and personally sacrificed every day to make it happen. I'm proud of the young children who come up to me and say hi, Danny, because they are actually now engaged in the exciting things that are happening in our province. I'm proud when I travel the country and meet expatriates who tell me what a difference it is now to be a Newfoundlander and a Labradorian living on the mainland. How people now respect them and inquire about whatever may have happened in this province that I can think of that hasn't been worth fighting for for the people of the province. There has not been one battle too great or too small for me and for our group if it meant a better life for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Even if it meant taking on my idol Paul McCarthy on the international. <laughs> I promised you that I was going to fight for you. I was going to fight against the giveaways. I was going to fight for our rightful place on the national stage. And though it hasn't always been popular with some, I haven't regretted one moment. It is who I am. It is who we are. It is who you elected me to be. And I promise you, even after I'm gone from the Premier's chair, I will always fight for our promise. This is the place that has been rejuvenated and re-energized in the past few years. And we must continue to work together as one, united, to ensure that that continues. <clears throat> if you step outside and breathe in the air, you are secure knowing that you are breathing in success. The success of us being a half prophet.
fiscal house is in order and a model for the rest of the country. But I'm not here today to say that everything's perfect. I'm not saying that there are not challenges and significant challenges to be faced. There will always be challenges. What I am saying is that I truly believe in my heart that Newfoundland and Labrador has never been better positioned to face our challenges and to seize those opportunities. Our time has come. Our future is being shaped in our own hands. We are the master sculptor holding in our hands the clay that will mold and form our destiny. Someone once said, how lucky am I to have had something that makes saying goodbye so sad? And I have indeed been so, so lucky. And it is very, very hard to say goodbye. When I entered public life, I knew it would be difficult. I knew there would be challenges. I knew there would be those who criticized just for the sake of criticizing or just to be seen on the evening news. What I didn't know at the time was how inspired I would be and indeed all of us would be by the people of our province. I didn't know that there would be days that I would feel so frustrated that I wanted to give it all up. But what I also didn't know was that on those very days, without fail, I would receive an email or a handwritten card from someone I had never met, thanking me, thanking us for our work, or just uplifting me with a kind word. I didn't know that there would be times, as all of us had done, that I was rushing through the airport, late for another flight, and dead tired from all the traveling. And suddenly I hear, hey Danny, why keep up the good work? <laughs> it gave me the strength many days to go on. It gave me the will to keep on fighting. And it made me so very, very proud to be a new commander and a laboratory. The sky is the limit in this great land of opportunity. And that renaissance has been worth the effort. effort. It has indeed been a great honor to serve as Premier of Canada's youngest, coolest province.